we've been kind of chatting and having a a good time like comadres you know it's nearly like a real comadrazo you know where <clears throat> nearly except I don't get to hug you and I don't get to get my hugs from you but um, a couple of you I saw last night because we, we we had book club and we had a great conversation and um wish we could have all shared that so the platica today is called using platica and story for community building and this happened by accident. I was attending a Texas Association of Chicanos in Higher Education conference. And uh, Dr. Uh, Miguel Guajardo, whose book is, is here, and, and you'll see this book come up again, was explaining to, hmm, there's feedback. Please everybody mute yourselves. All right, good. Is that better? Yes, it is. Wonderful. So Dr. Miguel Guajardo was one of the presenters and he had uh, students or individuals telling stories that were either his, stu his students previously, because Dr. Um, um, Grimaldo is, is graduated a long time ago. And, but nonetheless, they told the story about learning from him, the experience of learning the leadership and about his framework for discussing community and using community to, um, in, from an academic point of view with pedagogy and frame, uh, theoretical frameworks. And it had all this theory around it. And to me, you know, I was like listening, okay, this is, this is really good. And then it became real. It touched my heart because he talked, he asked a student, who did you bring with you? And the student said, I came by myself. And he said, you didn't come by yourself. You brought, and he started sharing and bringing, talking about the ancestors that he brought with him and his family history and all that. And I burst into tears. I had no idea that I had felt so lonely, which is why Las Comadres was created, because there was that loneliness, that isolation, and that connection to community meant so much to me. And I wanted to share that with you. And that's why we invited um, Dr. Leticia Romero Grimaldi, uh, Grimaldo uh, to join us. And she's a researcher at the Meadows Center for Preventing Educational Risk at the University of Texas at Austin. And she serves as a principal investigator for the English Learner Institute for Teaching and Excellence and co-principal investigator for Project Collective Capacity. Her research interests include language, literacy, culturally and linguistically responsive pedagogy and practice, bilingual bicultural education, job embedded professional learning, school reform and school leadership. And she's been a comadre for a long time. Comadre Leticia, welcome. Thank you so much, Nora. I am just super, super excited to be with you today. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I'll just mention that you may write your questions in the chat and we'll address them at the end. Yes, that would work out great. You know, I really am truly excited to be here with all of you this evening. I think it's just a great opportunity to engage in Platica and grow together. You know, when Nora um, reached out to me, I was just so excited because I feel like a lot of the work that we've done really is kind of core as to what she's done with La Comadres. Um, Las Comadres, I know for me, when I was a very young teacher and learned about Las Comadres and had another fellow teacher take me to one of the Comadrazos. Um, it was just so amazing to see so many people um, that looked like me, that had similar backgrounds and um, that were professionals. And so I'm just super humbled and honored to actually be here and be able to share some of the work that I have done. So this evening is really about celebrating our stories, coming together and building community and authentic ways of knowing. I wanna start this off by having you reflect on your journey. So I want you to take about three minutes to write down three pivotal moments that have changed or impacted the trajectory of your life. And it can be at any point in your life that these pivotal moments have happened. Also think about who have been the people who were important in these moments for you. 
So I'm gonna start a timer now, three minutes. About 30 more seconds. Okay, so as we continue with our platica this evening, I want you to continue to reflect on these pivotal moments and important people to see if you can make connections or relate to my story and the bits of information that I offer on using platica and story and community building. Dolores Delgado Bernal tells us that like the trenza, when we are able to weave together our personal, professional, and communal identities, we are often stronger and more complete. At the same time, weaving together these and many other identities is fraught with complexity, tensions, and obstacles. So as we continue, I want you to also think about our trenza de identidades, the braid of our identities. We embrace and navigate through various identities that inform the way we move through our lives. The balancing of work and family and community. There may be times or spaces when we don't feel like we can be our true cultural and linguistic selves, and that can be difficult. So maybe our ways of knowing and being aren't particularly accepted, or we often feel isolated. If there are a few people who share similar backgrounds, views, and perspectives, Using platica and storytelling with like-minded souls can be healing and can help us unpack our strands of identities and redefine what moving forward through these spaces looks like and means. So now I'm gonna share a little bit about my journey and share how this work has transformed my life. So I grew up the youngest of five in a small West Texas town. So growing up Latina in Brownfield, Texas, I rarely saw anyone that looked like me working in a professional setting. So to see Latinos serving as principals or lawyers or central office administrators in our school district simply did not exist. While brown skin was abundant among custodians, lunch employees, and maintenance workers, I often wondered why professional Latinos in our community were so rare. There's a pivotal moment that I feel changed the trajectory of my life, and that includes my high school counselor. 
I was one of two Latinas that were in honors AP courses and early my senior year, the counselor came in to pass out scholarship forms to the class. She passed out scholarship forms to everyone in the class except for the two Latinas sitting in there. Neither one of us said anything, but I decided to go to her office after school. I asked if I could please get one of the forms that she had passed out in class earlier that day. And she said that I wouldn't need one for South Plains College, which was the local community college down the street. She assured me that going to South Plains College was a great accomplishment. Now I was in the top 10% of my class in all honors AP courses. And I told her that I was actually thinking about UT Austin or SMU. She exploded in laughter and said, oh honey, I'm so sorry, but UT is too big and too hard and you'll never make it. And SMU is expensive, your family can't afford it. I remember listening to her words and I felt shame, embarrassed. I quickly left her office and never returned. Now with the help, support and guidance of my oldest sister and my mom, I successfully attended UT Austin as an undergrad. Now don't get me wrong, UT was big, it was hard, but believe me, there was no way that I wasn't going to graduate. So when graduation came around, I remember feeling the need to hand deliver an invitation to my counselor. So when I was home, I went up to the high school and she genuinely looked happy to see me. She asked how I was doing. And I said, guess what, Ms. Cowan, UT was not too big, nor was it too hard, I made it. Here's an invitation to my graduation ceremony. While she looked surprised, she accepted the invitation and smiled. I realized then that she had no idea the effect she had on me that day, my senior year of high school, or I don't even think she remembered that conversation that we had. I attended UT Austin as an undergrad in spite of the deficit perspectives and racism I grew up accustomed to in my schooling and worked as a bilingual teacher in Round Rock ISD where I had a principal, Mr. Carlin, who recruited me to Texas State University's master's program in educational leadership. While in the master's program, we had to present our work for a level one exam in front of other faculty in the master's and the PhD program. This is where pivotal moment number two comes in for me. The director of the PhD program, Dr. Slater sat on my panel. He was either impressed with my presentation or my ability to speak Spanish because after I presented, he invited me to be part of the research project with university faculty, students who were in the PhD program and with the partnering Mexican university and professors. The research took place in Mexico City. So being bilingual was definitely an asset here. I vividly remember receiving the call, inviting me and feeling so proud of the invitation but that quickly turned to fear. I definitely had imposter syndrome. What in the world could I contribute to this conversation and scholarly work? Through a, though a foreign space, I began to realize that I did have something to contribute. I did deserve a seat at the table. This opportunity opened the door for me to apply to begin the PhD program, which I was extremely nervous about. When I started the PhD program at Texas State, what I quickly realized with this was that I longed to read the literature that I could relate to. The literature that talked about the struggles and experiences of Latino youth and leaders. Classes were filled with readings from Fullen, Glickman, and Sergio Vanni. And while these works proved to be important in educational leadership, I felt that it only told part of the story. I didn't see myself or the students we served reflected in the curriculum or discussions of the program. At this point, I had the agency and relationship with the director of the PhD program to go and advocate, question, and have a platica about the missing piece. After planting seeds through various conversations, he finally told me that he wanted a new junior faculty member to serve as my mentor because he would be able to meet my needs. While this obviously didn't create immediate change for the entire program, it did start the process in a very real and raw way. And this is when I met Dr. Wajardo. Pivotal moment number three. So words can explain what the independent studies that I had with Dr. Wajardo did for me. I was able to feed that which my soul had been longing for some time. The books, the literature, the platicas over coffee and critical self-reflection. My understanding and learning and a new level of awareness. 
he set up a cohort of other PhD students of color and we met regularly to share our struggles, to share our writing, to deconstruct what we were reading and learning. These were community learning exchanges. I found comfort in reading Valenzuela, Valencia, Yoso, and Delgado Bernal that confirmed to me that I was not alone in my struggles. I was not alone in the feelings and angers about inequity that existed in our schools for our kids. I reached a new level of understanding and a new level of consciousness and was able to apply my new knowledge and research in the research work that I was doing with teachers in school at the University of Texas at Austin. This was a liberating time for me and transformational. This instilled hope and change. Um, using platica and storytelling became an integral part of my life. It allowed us to build community and support each other in moving forward with anything and everything that came our way. Nothing, and I mean nothing, ever seemed impossible after that. Dr. Wajardo defines a community learning exchange as providing diverse community members, whether it's leaders, activists, educators, youth, elders, an opportunity to come together and engage in deep learning. Together in relationship, we openly examine our common challenges, our collective gifts, and then freely exchange successful approaches and tools that can drive changes within ourselves, our organizations, and our communities. So doing this work is guided with the follow, following axioms or values. It truly is what is at the heart of the work that we do. It requires conversation and platicas, honoring people's stories and building on assets and hope. First, we have learning and leadership or a dynamic social process. It's rich and collaborative. So think of relationships, whether they're individual or group connections, really are at the foundation of community building and the learning that must occur to support them. With any sustainable change, relationships are key. They are all encompassing, vulnerable, and where trust is at the core. Through my work at the university, there was a time when I was part of a large group providing professional learning and support to schools across the state and implementing best practices in reading instruction. While it was easy to get lost and feel isolated with such a large group, there were about 15 of us, majority women of color. And I will say that one of them is in this platica right now, Olga Martinez Hickman, who we found each other and created a safe place to unpack our work learning support each other along the way with work, life, balancing it all. And we created a family that still holds strong to this day. We would get together monthly for large trainings and then we would use the evenings to engage in community learning exchanges where platica and story, laughter, coming together would lead to community building. Now platicas and storytelling breathe invitation grace and dignity into relationships and truly is central to the learning. Think about your own lived experiences. How many times were your biggest learnings done around platica and storytelling? It is through this process and in our relationships where we change and grow. I think of mommy, papi, tios and tias, brothers and sisters, primos and primas. So much of my foundational learning was done around a table or kitchen while making holiday tamales, eating, laughing. It privileges the voices of all and gives life to possibilities. One of the things I remember vividly learning through platica and storytelling with mommy is that we always lead with grace. That having a good education is much more than our formal schooling. That the essence of having a true education or being buen educado is one where you treat others with respect. So I want you to think about some of your memories. If you will use the chat feature, just if you will type in what are some of the learnings that you have had through platica or storytelling, whether it's with friends, other comadres, whether it's with your family, anyone just feel free to type in the chat and I'll read some of these out loud. We're putting our learnings in. 
just anything that you can think of that you've learned through story or platica, just anything that you can remember just growing up, if um, platicas or storytelling were part of your lived experiences, like maybe you had a grandfather or a grandmother or a mom who would do storytelling where you would learn lessons, like just life lessons. If any of you can type it in the chat or if anyone wants to share out loud, that's fine as well. Okay, I'm getting some things here. Let's see. I learned from discussions with a tia when I was young that I could make my dreams a reality. Talking with vecinos y abuelos about life and how they grew up, the importance of family, absolutely. Appreciating different perspectives. Family values were taught through storytelling. Yes. Hard work pays off. Family history. Sitting outside with my grandpa and just learning from him. Oh, yeah, that brings back beautiful memories for me too. As we talk about um, your elders and families, one of the things that I will encourage you to do is if you ever have the opportunity, if you have elders that are still living that are in your life, take the time to video record their oral history. Just ask them questions about their lives and let them tell it in their own way with a cup of coffee. I've done that with both my mom and dad through my dissertation work and Papi has since passed away. He passed away about eight years ago. And I will tell you that I go back to that recording over and over again and just love to have his voice and him telling his own story and his own voice has been so powerful and powerful for my boys as well because they were young when he passed. So surfacing and empowering local perspectives and wisdom fosters a creative agency that helps people strengthen and use their power and voice to respond to their local communities and own their futures together we believe that the people closest to the issues are the best situated to discover answers to their local concerns i have seen many missed opportunities where People who are at the core of whatever is happening aren't the ones that are asked what the best solutions are. I think about a story of Juan at Monterey High School in Lubbock, Texas. So I was doing some consulting work and school reform with Lubbock ISD several years ago, and they had newcomers coming in from um, different countries around the world and um, they needed support and how to best meet these students needs. And there was a particular um, high schooler, his name was Juan, he was a junior. And I remember sitting in a room and we had the superintendent, the associate superintendent, the director of literacy and, in and instruction, and we had myself and the principal and two teachers. And we were all talking about what was best for Juan and what could help Juan be successful. And so as I was there the first three to five minutes, I just said, has anybody asked Juan? And they all looked at me as though it was some, you know, kind of crazy idea to bring a high schooler in to tell us what we, he felt was best for him. And I'm like, let's go get Juan. Let's go get them out of class and bring them in. And it was such a powerful experience because all we did, Juan came into the room and we asked Juan, when do you feel most successful in school? In what classes do you feel you do the best in? What are the reasons why you feel you do the best in those particular classes? Which classes are most challenging and why? And we quickly were able to, with him, so he has buy-in, right? It's his voice. With him, we were, be, we were able to create these support systems that were best suited for him, who was at the core of support, right? That we needed to support him. 
And so I think sometimes this can be easily forgotten. We have outsiders coming in and telling local communities or local organizations what is best for them. They're the givers of knowledge. When quite honestly, that work needs to come from within. We can facilitate that work, but it really needs to be owned by who's at the core, right, of those local concerns. Another important aspect to make sure you're crossing the borders between generations, between races, cultures, economic classes. This is an integral part of the work. As I mentor graduate students working on their masters and PhDs, the beauty is that there are so many walks of life. So people who are in different places in their lives with the diverse experiences, the learning exchanges are so much more powerful because of this. I offer this picture here of Mami and Enrique, who's my youngest, now in seventh grade, not, does not look like that anymore. Um, and I offer this picture of them making masa for tortillas. Now, clearly, Mami is the tortilla expert here, as I have never had any better than the one she makes. And she has much wisdom to share. But it's important to know that note that Enrique has much to share as well. Whether it's a different way of rolling the masa or dropping the ingredients in the bowl, the role of teacher and learner is blurred. And through the collaboration and exchanging of ideas, this leads to collective learning. So with this work, it's important to note that everyone learns from each other. Everyone has something important to share through their stories, through their experiences, and through their wisdom, regardless of your lived experiences, your time and place, how old you are. We're all coming together and learning from each other. Too many times our communities are looked at from a deficit approach or lens. Outsiders looking in will talk about all the things that need to be fixed in our communities or with our children in schools, but our community building approach focuses on our hopes, our dreams, and our assets because we all know that our community is filled with many of those things. When we tell our own story and express our dreams, we can begin to map our assets, our gifts, ideas, and hopes. And it allows us and others to view our roles and power within our community in different collective ways. This is one of the things that is fundamental in our educational leadership program at Texas State. Our master's program students engage in action research and asset mapping in their own school communities. They go to the community, gathering educators, family members, students, and community members to discuss the issues at hand. And through their own experiences using Platica and Story, they come up with solutions together. Now, here I'll just explain a little bit about my background. So while I am a principal investigator and researcher at the Meadow Center for Preventing Educational Risk at UT Austin, doing research with schools and teachers, I'm also an adjunct professor at Texas State in our master's program, and I sit on dissertation committees um, for our PhD students. So I still, I feel like I have the best of both worlds because I work with teachers that are, you know, from pre-K, kinder, and I work all the way up with graduate students in grad school. Um, and this work informs everything that I do, regardless of where it is. I mean, it infor informs the work that I do at home with my family. So now is the fun part, the important piece. So I've given you some nuggets, some things to think about, but now I wanna go back um, for you to think about and reflect on what you wrote earlier. Let's go back to that reflection you did at the beginning of our, of our session. I'm going to put you in breakout rooms. I'm gonna see how many people we have. So I'm going to put you in breakout rooms with about four or five of you per room. And I want you to go ahead and share, have a platica with your fellow comadres and share some of your pivotal moments that you talked about earlier, those three pivotal moments. And I want you to think about those impactful experiences. And if anything that has come to light with the conversation, the platica that I have had with you today, with my experiences, with your experiences, and thinking about in your area of work, what are some 
ways that you can infuse or you can utilize uh, platica and storytelling to build community in your area and what it is that you do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put you in there and I'm going to give y'all about